I am going to take it back in the newsroom for now and totally change gears actually because we are celebrating Black History Month in the month of February and I'm so blessed to have our next guest with us here in studio, Trina Ferguson. So happy to meet you first off. Thank you. And have you in. Uh, we're, we're talking to some influential figures from our DMV area community who um, have a story behind them and they have motivational thoughts and experiences and she even has a book and so we're gonna just sit down and have a nice little conversation okay. Trina about your life and sort of what led you to what you do today okay and how you influence the community and you have a cool story so let's start from the beginning okay talk to me a little bit more about um, where you're from how you started out as what you are and then okay. how this book came about let's talk about all of it okay sounds good yeah. I am originally from New Jersey and um, we moved down here when I was in middle school and um, I just always wanted to be a child psychologist. And so I went to University of Maryland and graduated. I met my husband um, at church, actually. And we, you know, got married and I was pregnant with our first child. And I remember my mom saying to me, I think you need to homeschool. Hmm. And I was like, no, it was foreign to me. It wasn't foreign to my husband because he has family members, but it was foreign to me. And it wasn't something I wanted to do and I did not want to leave the salary that I had and the office that I had. Yes. <laughs> so, um, but shortly after, you know, my mom had spoken to me about it, um, we were having some complications with the pregnancy and I went to the doctors and the doctor actually said, you pretty much have to choose between your job and your child. Really? Yes. At the time now you were working in a certain field? Yes, I was working in a certain field and it was pretty stressful. Okay. Um, it started becoming very stressful and uh, very long hours. Okay. And, um, and so it just, um, of course, the, the, you know, it was, well, I would choose my child. Sure. <laughs> so and you were still I pregnant up, with him at the time. I'm still pregnant with him at the time. So I ended up leaving my job. And um, I was thinking, you know, I'll, well, after the pregnancy, then I'll find another job. But my husband really, you know, he really wanted um, us to be able to be the main influence on our children. And so he wanted to spend, he wanted us to spend more time with them and them to be able to spend more time with us, as opposed to us having these jobs that, you know, it was just really long hours and could hmm. not um, be able to spend the amount of time that we really wanted with our children. And so I came, I came home, we were on one income, and we started looking into schools around a time where Christian was four, and we had a school picked out. Mm -hmm. And um, unfortunately, that school did not work out. <laughs> this is still the Maryland area. This is still here. Maryland area, yep. yes. And I, I went one day to um, a library just for the read-along time for the children. And so we went, and I'm sitting there with our, with our son at this point. He's, like I said, he's four, four and a half. And we're still trying to figure out what are we going to do as far as school. And a librarian afterwards came up to me and she said, have you ever considered homeschooling? Mm. And I said, well, my husband has talked about it, my mom's talked about it, but it's not for me. And she said, it may not be for you, but it's for your child. She said, I watched him and as the children were leaving, that's when he stood up and started answering questions and you know, playing with the different things that were in there. And so she said, some children thrive better in a smaller Being on setting. Being own kind yes. of space, his own exactly. time, okay, exactly. intimate setting. And so when she said that, um, that was the first time I ever heard that because I grew up in um, you know, private school and public school, mm. so I never really mm -hmm. thought about the, the class size because it just wasn't on my mind. So um, we, you know, I went home and I told my husband about it, and we, we started thinking more and more about homeschooling, started researching it. Um, for me, we end up having to, I need to see things. So we did a chart and we did a chart. It said private school, public school, and homeschool. And the pros, pros and cons. the cons, the questions, concerns, all mm -hmm. of that. By the time we finished with the chart, we pretty much knew it was probably more beneficial for us as a family to yes. homeschool. And um, for me, sometimes I can be a little, <laughs> uh, it takes a while for me to, to really be on board with something I'm scared of. And so, um, uh, I, you know, I saw it on paper and I'm like, okay, we'll probably end up homeschooling, but I just need one more sign. Yeah. <laughs> and um, my husband ended up calling me one day from work. He was at work and he called and he said, this lady is giving away a free chalkboard. And I was like, okay. That was going to so, help you get your foot. So we went to the lady's house oh and got this chalkboard for free. And she said, um, have you considered homeschooling? And I was, was like, coming well, to you in all these places. Yes, I said, well, we've considered it. Um, she said, um, well, I, I have curriculum. 
I'm closing down my daycare center. Mm. I have curriculum. I have school supplies. She gave me everything that she had. I had the exact curriculum that I wanted. I said, if I'm going to homeschool, this is the curriculum that I wanted. And she gave me the curriculum up until third grade. Wow. She gave me school supplies that, um, again, my son was four and a half at yeah. this point. I still have some of the school supplies that yeah. she has given to me. So at that at that point, it's like, well, you know, Amazing. you have to at that point. <laughs> the signs were kind of given to you. You mm -hmm. really are a perfect example of taking education into your own hands. Yes. What did you see in the education system that sort of turned you away from that when you were when he was growing up? Um, I, I don't think it was necessarily what I saw or what I didn't see. Sure. I think it was more so what would benefit benefit us as a family mm. because I am also a youth leader and okay. I'm surrounded by children of all ages and they are, you know, some are in public school, some are in private school and and some are homeschooled and I think it just really boils down to what is the best thing for your child mm. um, if we could all actually work together that would be awesome because our main goal is to educate our future generations mm. and so it wasn't like I said it wasn't so much that I saw something negative or saw something positive it was just what would work best for our child and our children and what would work best for our family. Yeah, really interesting. And so tell me, as you started on this journey, this is a whole new journey for you. Yes. <laughs> what were some of the setbacks or what was the hardest part about it? And there's um, still hard parts about oh, it. Oh, absolutely. you're still doing it. You have three yeah. kids now. Yes. Um, so we'll go into that a little more too okay. about all your individual kids. But right. yeah, well, tell me initially what was hard, what were the setbacks? The hardest thing was it's all, you kind of feel like it's all on you. Um, if they're successful, then people are like, oh, wow, you did a great job. If they're not, then it's like, oh, you should have never homeschooled. Yeah. Um, you know, and it's not a thought of, you know, maybe the child just didn't, you know, understand certain things. It's it, they kind of went like when we would go out, when, especially when he was younger, when he when we would go out um, and people would ask us, you know, oh, why are you home? You know, or are you, are you um, is school out today? Mm -hmm. And he would say, no, I'm no, homeschooled. I'm school. And and so they would start drilling him and asking him questions after question after question and then you know they would ask me questions about my educational background sure. and, and so that was the toughest thing yeah. because it's like you don't you would not you know quiz any child you know that said they were in public hmm. school or private school um, I like to call it traditional school so if, if they were coming from a traditional school you wouldn't quiz them mm -hmm. but because they're homeschooled you're quizzing them yeah. and so that was very that 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 was frustrating. That was probably the hardest challenge for me. And then at times back then it was lonely because you didn't really know a whole lot of homeschoolers. It was just like a small group. Um, and we went to a co-op, so we had other families, but it was still a smaller group. Now it's like when we're out, when you know my children and I are out and we're on field trips, it's like. You know, even my son's like, Mommy, there's a lot of homeschoolers oh, now. Really? It is yeah. a lot of homeschoolers now. And so it um, it makes the it makes the journey a little easier. Huh. It makes it easier. Yeah, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. I didn't know the numbers thing. Do you think there was ever or is there a public stigma sort of uh, sort of thought process or a knowledge about homeschooling that is negative? Oh, absolutely. Is there? Absolutely, because um, it's funny because sometimes when people find out that we homeschool, they'll ask like a pop culture question and they're amazed that my children can answer it. Mm, <laughs> and it's mm -hmm. like, you know, so I like to joke and say, you know, well, we don't live under a cave, you know, or yeah, under a rock. Of course. Um, but I, I do think it's, we're, we're, tr we're kind of, um, society, we're kind of used to what we're used to, you know? And when something is different, you tend to have a lot of people who are going to ask questions. You tend to have a lot of doubts. Um, I had my own. So mm -hmm. it doesn't bother me as much because I had my own doubts about it. So I, I like to educate people. I yeah. really do. That's when we're out. I love to tell people what is it, what is it that we do um, and just to inform them because a lot of the questions and comments come from just a lack of knowledge. You mm -hmm. really don't know any a whole lot about homeschool, and that's why people have the negative feelings that they do. Mm -hmm. You said you have doubts. What was the thing that pushed you over that made you know, okay, I'm not gonna have these doubts. I'm gonna go go with it. Um, I I just think that you just have to know your why. Why are you doing a certain thing? You're gonna have doubts, no matter how strong you are in what you're doing. There's always gonna be something where. You may have a little doubt about, you know, okay, am I making the right decision? 
So sometimes the hardest things for you to do or the, the right thing for you to do in your life tends to be the hardest thing for you to do. So you're going to have doubts, but just keep going. Like mm. don't allow those, those doubts to kind of paralyze you from not moving forward mm. in the direction that you believe you should go. Yeah. You seem to be giving sort of advice and motivation, <laughs> even in speaking with me, which is interesting because eventually, as you did this over the years, you eventually wanted to put something into writing, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. And you made, she's an author, Trina. <laughs> <laughs> Ferguson, also an author from our community, um, the tagline being learning from the good, the bad, and the icky lessons to help you through the day. And it's interesting, yes. this book, so a published book here, um, with detailed chapters about these lessons learned, and after mm -hmm. every chapter, it's sort of a summary of something, and then the lesson that you learned, a Bible verse that goes with it. Yes. It's it's almost like, like I was saying, like a motivational devotional of sorts. Yes. Mm -hmm. Really neat. What inspires you to kind of write this? I know we're getting a little ahead, but no, you're fine. Uh, tell me more about this book. What inspired <laughs> me was um, a day that I was sitting on the steps and yeah. I was crying oh. because I'm looking at my three, and it just happened to be a day where nobody was getting anything, nothing was clicking, and I literally sat there and I cried and I was like I didn't ask for this and I just cried and it was like this calming I just started feeling kind of calm about it and and I felt like um, I'm, I'm a believer and so I, I I do I live my life for God and I just remember feeling like why do I think I'm better than the plans that God has for me so if this is a plan that I am on and this is what I'm supposed to do then you know everything will be okay and so I literally I wiped my tears and I was like I cannot be the only one who feels this way about whatever journey that they're on and I wanted to I wanted to encourage others and say hey you're not alone mm. hey you know your house may not be you know um, uh, perfect perfectly clean when you have a lot of younger children but it's okay someone out there can relate to you someone out there is trying to tell you hey you know be encouraged even in the mess like one of my um, one of my chapters is called mysteries and I made up the word yeah. but it was just an injury as a result of the toys being on the floor and I tripped and sprained my ankle oh my and goodness. so I was like well you know this is a mystery. <laughs> it was an injury that was the result of a mess. Yeah. So a lot of my lessons in the book are, um, I wanted them to be practical and I wanted them to um, be relatable. I wanted mm -hmm. someone else, another mom to say, hey, I have toys on my floor too. And you know, wow, if I just teach my children to put away, you know, one thing at a time, mm -hmm. then this would avoid, you know, the, the injuries that, that come from it or the, the financial, um, uh, hits that you may get because of co-pays and things like that. So I just really wanted to make sure that the book was an easy read as well because a lot of times we don't, we're busy, you know, mm -hmm. and we don't have a lot of time to sit mm -hmm. and, and read, but sometimes we can kind of steal away in the bathroom and have like a quick five minute, you know, read and walk away feeling encouraged. Yeah. So that's what I wanted to do. Isn't that amazing too? Really in any situation in life when we have someone else that's feeling the same thing, when we mm -hmm. have that empathy, uh, it just feels it feels encouraging. Yeah. So there's, you can get through that next exactly. thing. Exactly. You mentioned sort of the hardest part about homeschooling. What's the best part about it? The best part, um, definitely the flexibility. Yeah. Um, so like my children are here today. This is like a field trip for them. They get to see, you know, how does Fox 5 cool. work, you yeah, know? And so, yes, room. exactly. Um, they get to experience life in a, in a new way. When we, we love, um, we love going to Florida. And so when we go to Florida, you know, they get a chance to have school in a totally different setting. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing that I love about homeschool is that um, I don't have to rush my children. Um, if they're stuck on something, I can actually take the time out and, and actually show them and teach them until they get it. You know, and if it's not whatever way that I'm doing it, if it's not working for them and they're not understanding it, I have the flexibility to find another way to teach it to them. So my son, um, I end up being, I end up finding out that um, just watching him, he learns through hands-on. Hmm. Um, my middle child, she learns through art. Um, things have to be colorful for her. And then my youngest, it's music. Everything is singing. So yeah. even if she's doing a worksheet, she's singing as she's doing a worksheet. And, and that helps them. And mm -hmm. so that, for me, I sit back and it's a, it, I, I realize how much of a blessing it is that I can actually look at them and learn their learning styles and be able to teach according to 
their learning style. That's so interesting too, Le even learning more about your children as their and their personalities and being more intimate. I'm showing right now some footage of some of the activities your kids yeah. do and some of the trips <laughs> they've been on. I've, I've noticed a lot of the arts, the dancing, the sports, all mm -hmm. that stuff. Um, as we flip through to kind of give you guys a little sneak peek of your life, yes. and it's so interesting. Is it also, is it cool, the aspect of being in the DMV area, having DC at your disposal? Oh, absolutely. And this area has even embraced homeschool in such a way where if you go on um, the Smithsonian's website, you'll have a lesson plan that you can oh, do. Really? We've done um, the Maryland um, Maryland Zoo. We've done the uh, the zoo, at the National Zoo, and they actually have lesson plans that you can take along with you, scavenger hunts that the kids can do while they're there. And it's just an awesome thing where you can literally go on their website and find material for you to take along with you while you're there. So really the concept and homeschooling in general has come a long way such that Absolutely. these big organizations and agencies and places that you might put your or bring your kids for a field mm -hmm. trip would have a lesson. Absolutely. In That's yes. so interesting. It's very Different interesting. Different time than when we were kids. Oh yeah, whatnot. definitely. Yeah. Definitely. And of course, we're doing this all in relation to Black History Month. It's yes. February, which is so exciting. We're so excited to have our guests every Friday here on our digital stream, starting with Trina, which is so fun. So tell me specifically, how can you expand on your journey in context of the African-American community okay. in general or, or in the DMV area or, or what you think? How does it relate, do you think? Um, I, I definitely, one of the things that I am loving is that our community, the African-American community is growing as far as homeschooling. And to be able to see, um, like for instance, on uh, social media, there's a group called African American Online Co-op. And what the owner does is she goes around and she calls different um, places, different places that offer online classes, and they give her a discounted rate for African American families who want to homeschool. And so it's helping just one by getting um, the word out that hey we're here we're homeschooling we're you know we're all trying to do the best that we can as far as educating our children um, so the programs that are opening up for African Americans is awesome my son um, at 12 actually flew his own, flew a plane really he had a, yes he was the actual he was the actual pilot That's so cool. <laughs> and the I pilot was the co-pilot and so they have an the aviation mm -hmm. um, program for African American homeschoolers. And um, it's through Shabbat Christian Academy Homeschool. And they have this program available to them. My son also participated in a Prince George's County Aviation Competition and the homeschooling group. It was three young, young guys, including my son. And they, they won the entire um, aviation competition. Mm -hmm. So just to see the world opening up to African-American homeschoolers and seeing the opportunities. I didn't have that opportunity growing up to yeah, fly a plane sure. at 12, you know. And my daughter um, was selected uh, to dance at a, a dance convention in Baltimore. And so these opportunities are opening up for the black community. And I love the fact that they're opening up for our children. Yeah, so interesting. Yes. And I, I really love the hands-on aspect. I'm a big lover and believer in getting that experience. Yes. And, and really just spending my life doing experiences rather than things. As right, we were talking exactly. About before. Seems to be sort of that's how, you, how you're raising yes. your family. Yeah. Which is so yeah. neat. And I also, for me, my mom always taught us to love to learn. Hmm. And a lot of times, Station you know, TV growing up, we, um, everything it, was, you, you want to make sure you get an A. You want to make sure you get an A. A. But for my children, I'm like, it's not so much an A, because you can have straight A's and not remember anything from school. Like, there's not that much that I actually remember from school. But to see how, you know, three years later, my son is able to tell me um, about a lesson that we learned three years ago, mm -hmm. when my daughter, who's only seven, can tell me about something she learned in, in preschool. They're retaining it. Yeah, they're retaining it, because they're, it's hands-on. They're mm -hmm. actually able to... Um, to, to, they're actually able to connect it to their life, to relate it to their life, and um, and they enjoy learning. Like that to me means so much more than than grades. I mean, you still have to get a good grade, <laughs> Absolutely. That's but so that to me means more because when you leave when you leave the house and you go to college and you leave college, at some point you're going to be on a job and they're not going to give you an A, yes. they're not going to give you a B, but you still need to work hard. And if you love to learn. Even on your job, you're constantly learning something new. Mm -hmm. It would be so much easier for you to adjust and to adapt to um, to the work environment mm -hmm. when you love to learn, yes. you know, and you're and you're doing it 
for the love of it, not necessarily to get something in return. I love that too. I think a lot of us in this newsroom can resonate with that too because yeah. we are all curious people yes. and journalists and lovers of learning and right. we love to learn from each other. And I think yes. putting that as a sentiment in your children at a young age is so great. Yeah. Um, I'm curious too, did you come from a public or private school background? How was your yes. education growing I up? actually went to a private school for the first six years mm -hmm. and then ended up going to public school until I graduated from high school. Okay. Yep. I actually went to um, school in Prince George's County and um, I had a wonderful, and I think that's probably why when people ask me, um, you know, well, what was it in the educational system that caused you to not? I, it, that's why I always say it's not so much that because I grew up in the in the educational yeah. system and I'm fine, you know. <laughs> so for me, it was more so it just boiled down to what is best for your family, mm -hmm. what is best for your child, because that that's what the goal is to make sure that they are um, able to live outside of your home and be able to function, you know, mm -hmm. and and to learn, mm -hmm. you know. So that that's why. Even when asked a question, I kind of more so put it on what is best for your child, what is best for your family. Mm -hmm. And when you had more children, you had decided this for Christian, the right. oldest boy, and you eventually had two more girls. Mm -hmm. Did you know already you were also going to homeschool yeah. them? It wasn't yeah. going to be a... For me, it was, I started thinking about, okay, well, if, if they show signs of this, you know, maybe uh, they'll be okay, you know, and they, they can thrive in a larger setting. But then my husband said something to me. He said, if we were in a traditional school, and it was working and everything was fine with every child where we say, hmm, maybe this child shouldn't go to this school. And I said, no. And he said, well, if it's working, why think about something else? Mm -hmm. If this is working, you go to the next child. And if this is working, you know, you can, yeah, exactly. So he, that to me, it, it made sense. Cause if they were going to a, a quote unquote traditional school, it wouldn't be a thought in my mind. They would just all go to the same school, you know, and it was just kind of keep going until they graduate. And so that that kind of helps me, and it, it put things into a different perspective. Mm -hmm. And you said child psychology was originally on your mind. It was, <laughs> and you didn't go. In, you ended up not doing that. No, right? I, because I had an internship, and I cried the entire oh, internship. <laughs> I couldn't believe the stories it's that I was hearing. Huh? It's very it's emotional. Hard. And so I was, I was actually told to find another. Um, find another major and I end up going into education. You did. I was going to yes. say was eventually yes. education your path. So that's mm -hmm. on your mind. You ended up writing about it. Do you think you'll write another thing or is this I'm like, actually currently to? working on another one now. Yes. Oh, related <laughs> because, or is yes, absolutely related to it. Um, at first I was I was going away from it and then I started getting a lot of feedback from people and they were just like, "Hey, we need this. We need oh. another. We're waiting for another book. When are you writing cool. another book?" And it so good. it did. Mm -hmm. It felt awesome. And and so I'm like, hey, well, you know, we just conquered middle school and we're on our way to high school. So yes. you learn a lot from middle schoolers. Well, speaking <laughs> of that, tell me about that. How is the transition between, because your kids are what ages now? They're, They're 13, 7, and 4. So all different curricula. Yes. Is that really hard to keep track of? Is that um, tough to kind of do? It, it can be lot. at times um, because you're not just focusing on teaching. So, you know, just life is happening in mm -hmm. general. Um, but my son, he's pretty much, um, he's definitely an independent learner. And so it's cool to be able to watch him. He'll gather up his stuff and he'll, you know, go into his little quiet space and he'll get his work done and then he'll come and check in with me. And, you know, the girls, um, even though they're four and seven, some of the subjects they actually like doing together. Even when I try to separate them, they mm -hmm. actually like doing their um, assignments together. Um, so, it, like I said, it can be difficult on, on certain days, but that's because life is just happening. Sure. Um, that's a but, really good attitude about know, it, because it is a lot. Yeah, it's, it's a lot, but um, at the end of the day, to see, to be able to see them and to hear things, you know, that they're talking about, I'm like, oh wow, this is actually pretty cool. Mm -hmm. I'm glad that um, <laughs> that they're learning something. <laughs> and I'm just, I'm just happy, I'm just happy, yeah. and I see how happy they are. And um, we have, you know, a huge village, and um, our village is very supportive of what we do, and so that's helpful as well. Community of other homeschool yes, moms. Yes, other homeschool moms, but not just that, just our family. Sure. We have homeschoolers that are actually in our family, and so sometimes we'll go on field trips with them. Um, we actually just went to a game, at, a basketball game at Navy, and it was, I think one of the pictures is up there. Sure, There's yeah. like over 30 of us uh -huh. <laughs> that are there, and sometimes they'll come and see um, my daughter's dance at, uh, they, they go to um, Dance Dynamic Studio, which is also um, owned and founded, owned, run by an African-American woman. 
And so all, my entire family will come and see, you know, them dance or we'll go to soccer games together. So the support system of the community and the support system of my family has really helped on those days where I'm like, ah. Yes, and, and you mentioned a woman-owned studio. Yes. How has being a woman sort of empowered you, especially in this time when, when the movement is, is right. very present? Right. How is it being a woman in the black community, and what would you say to other women out there doing this? And um, any I, one of the things that I would say is if something is in your mind that you want to do, and you're like, you know, well, nobody else is doing it with me. Do it anyway. Mm. Like, stand alone if you have to, but do it anyway. Because we have younger girls who are looking at us. And I would so much rather them have positive examples, you know, and role models to look at. And so, like, my daughters were looking at figure skating. And they're like, Mommy, look, she can do that. I can do that, too. I love hearing that. that. confidence I and that knowledge. I love hearing that, yes, mm -hmm. at four and seven to say, Mommy, I can do that, too. And then they're mm -hmm. practicing around the house. Or they'll see a dance competition. They're like, Mommy, I can do that, too. Then they get up and do it. And they like to flip. So, you know, when they yeah. watch gymnastics, they'll yes. pull out the mats in the house. And fun? so I love that I love that because when you step out there and you do something they're watching you you know they they read my book and they're just like wow mommy wrote a book I can write one too That's my little neat. one is writing one right oh, now good. and so it's just keep doing whatever it is that has been placed on your heart do it because there are younger ones who are looking up at us and mm. saying I can do that too and with confidence, you know, yes. with confidence. And so I love good. it, I love it. So great words of motivation and advice for people out there. And I do want to bring in your family, if they don't mind. I okay. see the kids around the corner. You guys want to come by. <laughs> Come on over. Let's at least introduce these kids. All right. Um, but I'm so, so happy to have Trina in here. Um, like I said, kicking off Black History Month for this month of February. Come on over, guys. Just get in the cam. We, get to, we got Christian, your oldest, the son. Yes. And then your little girls. All different ages. So cool. What do you guys like about being homeschooled? Any thoughts? Um, I like the, flex the flexibility. Yeah. Um, like I can like go to Florida and learn certain stuff. I can um I can go to the store like with my mom whenever I want. Mm -hmm. But then the only thing is I still have to get my work done. So like even if I wake <laughs> you up, you got homework. Late, I can, <laughs> like sometimes I work from like twelve to like nine or something because yeah. I wake up late. Yeah. But, yeah. And DC is so cool, right? Isn't it great being right here in the Maryland DC area? Yes. All the stuff downtown. Yes. That's like probably my favorite part. I mean, there's so much to learn. Hey, girls. I'm just kidding, Cam. I know it's hard to squeeze them all in, but come on over. But anyway, this has been an awesome time. Thank you for sitting down Thank for this you interview. For Thank me. you guys for watching. Um, great way to kind of end our daily stream here, this segment. Um, and really, some great words. This is very cool for me to thumb through your book. Thank you. Anything last thoughts on this or? Um, just one of my favorite chapters in the book is yeah. called "Embrace the Journey." Hello, iced coffee, and I'm a, I'm nice. a hot. I love hot tea. I love hot chocolate. Hot mm -hmm. coffee. Anything hot. And I had a surgery a few years ago where I had to, um, I couldn't drink anything hot for about four to six weeks. And my sister-in-law was like, hey, try iced coffee. And I was like, iced coffee? For real? It was foreign to you because <laughs> yes. you were like, no. I was like, and so, and I was like, oh, this is good. And it was helpful because it actually soothed my, my throat. And so I wrote that as the first chapter because huh. I, and I wanted to leave this with the viewers that um, embrace the journey that you're on. It may be different but it's beneficial for you at that time in your life. So embrace the journey and understand that just because something is different, homeschooling is different, mm -hmm. but it doesn't mean that it's better. It doesn't mean that, you know, it's what, what we're doing is better or worse than what you're doing. It's just different. Mm. And let's learn how to embrace those differences on our journey. Wow, great way to sum it up and great way to end this little segment here, guys. Lessons learned from a whole home, my homeschool day yes. is what it's called. She's working on another book. Yes. So glad to have you in here. Thank you Thanks, so much. Trina. I appreciate it. Nice Thank meeting you. you. Yeah, guys. We'll be right back. <laughs>